It's Nolan. Don't tell G and Thoughts that I'm in here, man. I'm going dolo for this one, you know what I mean? <laughs> Fresh and local, what up? Uh, yeah. Been the man in my city since before it was discovered. My scrolls roll deeper than Indians in the struggle. Moms never believed me, told me get a job, I swear to God. Every dime I spent was to flourish before the end of time. Now I'm getting recognition, records breaking statisticians, saving up so I could finally get a whip to pass emissions. Man, you never seen the method so clean. I could probably be a tailor for Joel Osteen. I'm so mean with precision, my vision is Tiger Woods. Like, straight up out that dirty, we hurting like Tiger Woods. Why, right? anybody trip? Must be sipping on that Bud Light Boy, stop Hitting intersections like I'm Suge Knight Rose from that belly God save me from the beast Technique Machiavelli Get respect from the deceased I speak into my celly Local deli Cut the beef Like Olympians I'm about to rap my medals I'm the street. one you should, know, you should know When you come to my city Yeah I'm not my buns getting low Tell them all the ones getting So you know it's not pretty Yeah But I'm the one you should know when you come to my city, yeah, I pray the Lord save my soul. Go ahead and holler if you hear me. Yeah, cause I don't want to your peace if you think it's sweet. I'm never fronting, baby, please. I don't think that deep. I'm from that side of town where teens learn to spray that heat. By 17, you either bleeding or you claiming peace. I say that's me, cause I done been around drugs and guns. Hey, ain't the pillin'. That ain't the great revealing. I came straight from the buildings with crack, coke, and smack. Don't roll in the sack. It's a trap. I ain't had to graduate school to know that. So when you see me doing numbers, no, I ain't stunting. It's for my people by the obvious as Blake Duncan. Neighborhood. Hoodies, stay jumping in the whip and stay bumping. Shout to Georgia State education just to change the subject. I done made friends and lost them and still call them dead homies in the wind. Tell them we still ballin'. It's regardless of the crew I rep. Any move I choose, I knew the steps. They been knew I'm next and I ain't gotta prove it to I'm the one you should know. When you come to my city, yeah, I'm not my buns getting low. So you know it's not pretty, yeah, but I'm the one you should know. When you come to my city, yeah, I pray the Lord save my soul. Go ahead and holler if you hear me, yeah, cause I'm the one you should know. What's going on, beautiful people? It's the kid Jay Nolan here. Welcome back to another episode of Inside the Industry, your number one source for music and entertainment commentary and breakdowns. Hey, man, as y'all can see here, we got the Inside the Industry hat. It came a little early, you know what I'm saying? I, I didn't expect the stuff to show up until uh, another week or so. Um, so we got the Inside the Industry hats. Um, I got to get the color changed on that because it's supposed to be orange, but it's yellow, you know what I'm saying? So we got to get that worked out, but... For the most part, this is what we're getting. This is a uh, this is a standard trucker hat. So if you want one, just let me know and I'll give you the link and stuff for it. But I, I do got to get the color right so that it's in line with the brand. But outside of that, that's where we at with it. Uh, much love and respect to everybody that's been tuning into the Inside the Industry show. I greatly appreciate y'all. Today, we're going to be getting into the Apple Music 100 Best Albums. And we're going to go from 100 to 1. OK, now, the reason why I want to get into this, not that I like Apple Music or their choices, but it's a very controversial list. There's a lot of people out there talking about it. And, you know, I think anytime a platform, a publication or anyone of like great influence comes out and does these type of things, it leads to conversation. And we always want to break it down and see what they did right, what they did wrong, where they missed, where they hit. You know what I'm saying? So we're going to go ahead and go over their top 100 albums of all time and remember this is an all-time list which is where things get a little rocky a little shaky a lot of disagreements but um according to uh apple music they state 
The Apple Music Top 100 Albums of All Time list was curated by Apple Music's internal team. Though it's not clear who specifically made these rankings, nor the number of people who put the list together, the team was given a strict set of guidelines. According to Ebro Darden, who is the global editorial head of hip-hop and R&B for Apple Music, members of the Apple team made their picks based on albums that represented a cultural moment for the artist or genre, albums that were complete thoughts, not just collections of hit songs, I'd be forgetting I got to stop putting them two fingers up. God damn. <laughs> that threw me off. Albums that thoroughly represent culture in production and lyrics. Albums that inspired a generation to create, to want to create more music. Albums that represented the best in storytelling, musicianship, recording, and production. And albums that are timeless and reached far beyond the genre categorization. Okay. So that's the explanation from Ebro as to how they deduced these uh, particular 100, okay? So the first album or number 100 is Body Talk by Robin. Maybe I'm not uh, musically inclined enough to know who Robin is or that album. If y'all are educated on that, let me know. I don't even know what that album is, and maybe that's a cultural thing. Um, number 99 is Hotel California by the Eagles. I've heard of Hotel California, never heard it. You know what I'm saying? So again, they're talking about all time. They're keeping all genres in, in perspective. So some of this is going to be culturally disagreeable just by default. But number 98, Astro World by Travis Scott. I don't know what world we're living in where Astro World or Travis Scott could ever have a top 100 album in all of music, period. OK, I don't understand how that could ever be a consideration or a stamp in any stretch of the imagination. Number nine, number 97 is Rage Against the Machine by Rage Against the Machine. I think that's a pretty influential album for people that were around for that era in the 90s. Rage Against the Machine was a big uh, band um, that was like the culmination of hip hop and rock music. Uh, and they're very respected. I could see that. I don't understand how they're in the same sentence as a Travis Scott. I'm sure there's some people that are, you know, younger than me that say the same thing, but the inverse, like how the hell could Rage Against the Machine be in the same sentence as a Travis Scott? Either way, we're going to move forward. Number 96, Pure Heroin by Lord. Y'all remember Lord? <laughs> Royals. I never heard that entire album. I only heard that song. Um... I don't see how that could be a top 100. I mean, when you really take into consideration all of the music that's been released in the history of everything, even if you go off the history of the past 50 years, where does Travis Scott and Lord come into the conversation? I'm not even going to disrespect the Eagles and Robin because I just simply don't know their music or their influence. So I'd rather not speak on them. But as I'm going through this list, it's like, what the hell is this? Number 95 is Confessions by Usher. I don't understand how you could be in the 90s. You know what I'm saying? And when I say in the 90s, I'm talking about the rankings and have Confessions next to Lord Travis Scott. You know what I'm saying? This is this is weird, but we're here to talk about it. Confessions by Usher should definitely be higher if it's going to be on the list. Um Number 94 is Untrue by Burial. Again, that is a cultural difference there. I don't know who that is. Uh, for all of my well-rounded musical people, this is your opportunity to speak out and let me know, hey, man, you tripping. These are great albums. Number 93, A Seat at the Table by Solange. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. This is tough. Because if I were to sit down and create a 100 list, of albums, I don't think none of these show up. And that's maybe a good thing or bad thing. I don't know. Maybe that's that's a testament to how unseasoned I am in music, perhaps. But I don't see none of these as like top 100. If you if you had to like if you had to go to the future and be like the top 100 albums created up until 2024, I don't see how none of these really make the list. I say Confessions is 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 probably a contender. Rage Against the Machine, just based on their uh, it's self titled and it's it, it was like their debut and it was like you know what I mean. Cool, 
their influence is stronger than the, probably the album itself. But number 92, Flower Boy by Tyler, the creator. I don't even know if people feel like that's the best album from Tyler, the creator. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, even when you consider the artists that are making the list, is this their best work to even put in a top 100 of all music made? Number 91, Listen Without Prejudice, Volume 1 by George Michael. Again, we're going to see some people like George Michael and others that, you know, you just can't really dispute because they're just kind of omnipresent in music, period. And you kind of got to respect that for what it is. Uh, number 90 is Back in Black by ACDC. Uh, number 89 is The Fame Monster by Lady Gaga Deluxe Edition. I've never listened to a Lady Gaga album in my life, so I won't even speak on it. Maybe there's a pop, you know what I mean, pop specialist out there. This shit is kind of, it's almost embarrassing and uh, disheartening at the same time. Embarrassing because I don't know some of this shit and disheartening because it's like, I don't know this shit. And <laughs> what the fuck is this? Uh, 88. I put a spell on you by Nina Simone. Nina Simone, I mean, you, she's going to make the list, period. She's got to. Blue Lines by Massive Attack. Number 86, My Life by Mary J. Blige. I respect that. I respect that. Number 85, Golden Hour by Casey Musgraves. Number 84, Doggy Style by Snoop Dogg. I respect the fact that it's on there, to be honest, I don't even really like Doggy Style that much. Outside of like five, six records on there, I don't care for that album. And I love Snoop. I I, I feel like that album, it culminates a time period in hip hop when he was dominating. It culminates a time in hip hop where he was making his debut and he was the biggest rapper alive at that time. But just off of musical output, when I turned that album on, I think I used to like it a lot more when I was younger than I do today. That's not to say it's not good, because the six songs that I love, I fucking love. The rest? 83, Horses by Patti Smith. Number 82, Get Rich or Die Trying by 50 Cent. I love... Get Rich or Die Trying. I still love Get Rich or Die Trying to this day. Um, the fact that it's even on the top 100, I mean, I think that's that's a testament to the strength of the album. Um, but I still love this album. It's it, it hasn't lost any of its luster to me, right? In comparison to like Doggy Style by Snoop. Um, 81, After the Gold Rush by Neil Young. Number 80, the Marshall Mathers LP by Eminem. Now, of course, I am a hip hop aficionado, I, I guess you could say. So when I see hip hop on here, I'm glad that it's represented. Uh, I don't know exactly where you should rank some of these hip hop albums. Um, I guess the fact that they're in the latter of the list, that's cool. Again, the Marshall Mathers LP. I used to like that a lot. I don't, today, I don't think the Marshall Mathers LP is even better than the Eminem show. I listen to the Eminem show a lot more than the Marshall Mathers LP. I think it's a lot better of an album, uh, music-wise, lyrically, production-wise. But perhaps that one shows up again. Maybe, that, maybe we see that at, at a later time down the list, but that's just me. Now, Marshall Mathers LP, what it did for Eminem, how it solidified him as a megastar at that time, I give him that. But are we going off of uh, time period and what it did for that person, or are we going off of the actual music? People got to let me know. Number 79, Norman Effin Rockwell by Lana Del Rey. Top 100 all time. 78. Goodbye, Yellow Brick Road by Elton John. You know he's going to pop up on here probably a couple times. Uh, like a Prayer by Madonna. 
Un Verano Senti, number 76 by Bad Bunny. I don't understand how Bad Bunny even makes this list in any stretch of the imagination. Number 75, Super Duper Fly by Missy Elliott. Love that album. Still has not lost its luster for me. I respect that. The Downward Spiral by Nine Inch Nails. I remember Nine Inch Nails. You know what I'm saying? I remember the time period, the MTV era. They were very big. Couldn't tell you the contents of each of their albums, but I'm not surprised that they made this list. And that's another thing, right? Some of the artists may be tailor-made for this list, but the particular project that's highlighted, I don't know. You know, I feel like, I feel like maybe this shouldn't have happened <laughs> if I'm being all the way real at this point. We're 25, 26 in, and I'm starting to feel like this should have never happened. Um, because of the mixing of genres, because of, um, I think really the mixing of genres, because everybody's going to be biased to whatever you grew up on, right? You're going to be biased to, um, the music that's personal to you, the genre that identified with you the most and everything else is going to kind of sound trivial, Right? Now, there are some projects and some artists that cross borders, and there's some like general music lovers out there that know all of this shit, right? Probably older people, but it's not clicking for me, you know? Uh, who is next? Aja by Steely Dan is at number 73. Steely Dan is five, you know? <laughs> Cool, by all means. Number 72, SOS by SZA. Now, I saw that SZA was actually pretty mad that she was number 72 on the list. I guess she thought that her album should have been higher. But again, we're talking about top 100 albums ever made. If you make number 72, if you're even on the list, which to some people, they feel like you shouldn't even be there. I think this is actually a pretty great position, right? You're a relatively new artist. You haven't been out. Well, you've been out for a long time, but you haven't been out on a major scale, but for about a decade. So I think even earning a top spot on here is is amazing. Um, but by her estimation, she felt like she should have been higher. She said it was like a slap in the face. Number 71 is Trans Europe Express by Kraftwerk. Never heard it. Number 70, Straight Outta Compton by N.W.A. Again, this is an album that represents a lot for hip hop, represents a lot for uh, N.W.A., represents a lot for each member of that group. I mean, Dr. Dre went on to become a megastar. Ice Cube went on to become a megastar. Um, Easy e became a, a, a huge star in his own right. Matter of fact, he was a star before these niggas. So, cool. Do I listen to Straight Outta Compton today? No. When I hear some of the records... Do I cringe? Yes. Do I still love some of those records? Absolutely. Uh, number 69, Master of Puppets remastered by Metallica. Number 68, Is This It by The Strokes. Number 67, Dummy by Portishead. I think there should be more soul on here too, to be honest. But whatever. Number 66, The Queen is Dead by The Smiths. Number 65, Three Feet High and Rising by De La Soul. De La Soul. I like De La. It's a classic album. Just never was my taste. <laughs> excuse me. I've been, I've been holding that motherfucking sneeze in for the longest. Please excuse me, y'all. <laughs> Three Feet High and Rising by De La Soul. I gave it to him off of, the, off of being, you know, super influential. Do I listen to that album? No. When I when I hear it, there's a few jams on there, but I've always preferred Tribe to De La Soul. I didn't like their lyrical style. Number 64, Baduism by Erica Badu. That, that is a classic to me. Personally, I can agree with that. Number 63, Are You Experienced by the Jimi Hendrix? Excuse me, by the Jimi Hendrix Experience. Big love to Jimi. You know what I'm saying? Number 62, 
All Eyes on Me by Tupac. Pac gonna have to show up a couple more times on this list if y'all putting All Eyes on Me on here. All Eyes on Me, honestly, is one of my least favorite Pac albums as an adult. When I was younger, I used to play that motherfucker. Today, I, I pretty much like the rest of his catalog more than that album. Um, but that's just me. Some people might still bump that shit like, you know what I mean? With the death row sound and all that. Hey, do you. Number 61, Love Deluxe by Sade. Big salute to Sade. You know what I'm saying? Legend. Legend daddy. Number 60, The Velvet Underground and Nico by Velvet Underground and Nico. Couldn't tell you. Eight, number uh, 59, AM by Arctic Monkeys. 58, What's the Story, Morning Glory by Oasis. Number 57, Voodoo by D'Angelo. There's some people out there that are mad that Voodoo by D'Angelo is higher ranked than Confessions. Um, I can understand why some people may feel that way, but for me, I feel like Voodoo is a much more influential album than Confessions, if I have to say so. And when I say influential, I'm talking about the people that are still pulling from the voodoo catalog pulling from the voodoo vocal um performance pulling from the voodoo production what was homeboy name uh leon thomas i think that's homie name leon something who his sound his song definitely was given uh d'angelo how does it feel type vibes about a year ago you know what i'm saying so yeah the, the music on that album, crazy. You tell me, the chicken grease. Like, all that shit, man. I have it ranked higher personally, but I, again, I can understand why somebody would feel some type of way. But if you, you play that motherfucking voodoo by D'Angelo today, tell, you tell me. <laughs> that be a bang. That be a crank. Number 56, Disintegration by The Cure. Number 55, Anti by Rihanna. I felt like y'all just wanted to put Rihanna on here at some point. I don't think she has a top 100 album by any stretch of the imagination in any lifetime. But that's just me. And that's not a diss to Rihanna. Um, I just don't think her music. I think what she's represented as an icon, what she's represented as an overall um, business in music, an empire in music. Absolutely. But a top 100 album. I could have swore that was like some people's least favorite from her. 54, A Love Supreme by John Coltrane. You're not going to get me to disrespect John Coltrane in any dimension. That probably should be higher. Um, Exile on Main Street by the Rolling Stones. Cool. Number 52, Appetite for Destruction by Guns N' Roses. Again, these are people that you expect to be on here because they've been on everybody's list for generations. Decades, at least. Sign of the Times by Prince, number 51, probably could be higher. Uh, number 50, Hounds of Love by Kate Bush. I don't understand how Kate, I mean, Kate Bush, word. No disrespect to Kate Bush, by the way. But wasn't her music sitting dormant until they put it in uh, Stranger Things two years ago? Shout out to her, though. Number 49, The Joshua Tree by U2. Of course, they're going to pop up on here. Number 48, Paul's Boutique by Beastie Boys. Again, this is like influence over the actual music. Beastie Boys, without them, we wouldn't have white rappers. We wouldn't have Eminem. We wouldn't have Macklemore. We wouldn't have Fred Durst. We wouldn't have Kid Rock. We wouldn't have none of these white rappers. You know what I'm saying? So they get that and they did some some cool shit with their music back in the G too. I'm not going to say that they was just whack, but you know. Come on. Number 47, Take Care by Drake. That's 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 very lenient. Uh 47 all time 100? Dude. 
I haven't come back to take care in years, personally. But, you know, no shot to Drake. You know what I mean? As far as being an artist. Number 46, Exodus by Bob Marley and the Wailers. Like, how do you have Drake next to Bob Marley? Right? That's where this thing looks funny. Um, Number 45, Homogenic by Bjork. Number 44, Inner Visions by Stevie Wonder should be higher. Uh, number 43, Remain in Light by Talking Heads. Number 42, Control by Janet Jackson. I feel like that album probably should be ranked a little higher too, especially with the surrounding music. <laughs> number 41, Equimini by Outkast. Love Outkast. Would I say it's top 50 album ever made i probably would have that ranked lower but i love that album um number 40 i never loved a man the way i love you by aretha franklin i'm not gonna argue that number 39 illmatic by nas now this is this is where things get a little tricky right when it comes to hip-hop fans, when it comes to hip-hop purists, when it comes to hip-hop historians, Illmatic is basically the, the fucking undisputed champion of hip-hop albums, right? So if it's ranked number 39 and that's supposed to be like the shining, the shining North Star of what a hip-hop album should sound like, then there should be no more hip-hop albums ranked above Illmatic on this list. There are some, but I'm just saying, if if that's number 39 and people say that that is the pinnacle of, of rap, how does that work? Number 38, Tapestry by Carol King. Number 37, Enter the Wu-Tang, 36 Chambers by Wu-Tang Clan. Uh, would I rank... 36 Chambers over Illmatic? Absolutely not. I, I feel like they're in a similar ballpark, but absolutely not. Number 36, Beyonce self-titled by Beyonce. I'm not mad at being number 36, but again, when you start looking at what's around her album, it looks weird. Number 35, London Calling by The Clash. Number 34, It Takes a, a Nation of Millions to Hold Us Back by Public Enemy. I respect the fuck out of that. Shout out to Public Enemy. Shout out to Chuck D. Shout out to Flav. Uh, like, that shit, that shit was iconic. I honestly think it probably could go a little higher. Personally. But is it a better album than Illmatic? Not in my opinion. Not a better album. Not a better listening experience. But, of course, it's all subjective. Um, Bomb Squad, you know what I'm saying? All that good shit, man. Yeah, they did their thing. Number 33, A Care by Radiohead. I'm cool with that. Number 32, Ready to Die by Notorious B.I.G. Again, why do, we have, why do we have that ahead of Illmatic? How? I'm going to keep coming back to that, unfortunately. Uh, number 31, Jagged Little Pill by Alanis Morissette. Number 30, when we, fall, when we All Fall Asleep, Where Do We Go by Billie Eilish. Billie Eilish has not created anything top 30 uh, all time ever in, in the history. You know what I'm saying? Get that the fuck out of here. I'm sorry. You, you can come back 20 years. We'll see. Number 29, Low End Theory by A Tribe Called Quest. I'm not going to argue that. Um, me personally, I'm a Midnight Marauders guy over Low End Theory personally, but... You know, I understand that's their debut. No, that's not their debut, actually. Uh, I think People's Instinctive Travels is, is the debut. Still, I'm a Midnight Marauders guy. But Low End Theory does have the hits. Number 28, Dark Side of the Moon by Pink Floyd. I respect that. That shit's fire. Number 27, Led Zeppelin 2 by Led Zeppelin. Never took time to really fuck with Led. Uh, number 26, Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy by Kanye West. That should have been probably about 12 to 15 spots back. Um, it's not even the best Kanye album. It might be the might be the best uh, produced Kanye album, but not the best album. I'm a graduation guy, though, but... 
It's a great album, though. I'm not mad at it. Number 25, Kind of Blue by Miles Davis. Absolutely fire. I think that should actually be higher. 24, The Rise and Fall of Ziggy Stardust and the Spiders from Mars by David Bowie. I respect I respect David Bowie. I'm going to leave him alone. Number 23, Discovery by Daft Punk. Wow, Daft Punk. That's pretty high. Uh, no, 23. Number 22, Born to Run by Bruce Springsteen. Number 21, Revolver by the Beatles. You knew they were going to be up here. Number 20, Pet Sounds by the Beach Boys. Somebody got to let me know. Were the Beach Boys really, like, making albums like that? Well, clearly they was making them, but, like, undisputed albums like that? I know they got, I know they got hits out the wazoo. But. You know, somebody got to educate me on that. 19, The Chronic by Dr. Dre. Again, this is another, this is this is just a pet peeve for me. Um, the Chronic by Dre is fire, fire. Still come back to that and it's fire. Unlike Doggy Style for me. Um, of course, there's people out there that's like, hey man, Dr. Dre's catalog needs to be disqualified because of his past and his, uh, you know, his DV and all that stuff. And hey, I ain't mad at you. I agree with you. If we're going, if we're going to go by those metrics, like we don't need to see him. We don't need to see Diddy. We don't need to see a couple of you motherfuckers, you know, but musically, if we just isolate that, I'm not mad at the choice. Number 18, 1989 Taylor's version by Taylor Swift. Do y'all, it's, for people that listen to Taylor Swift, I don't think nobody on my channel listen to Taylor Swift, but do y'all really feel like the Taylor's version of her of her albums are better than the originals? The reproduced versions? Number 17, What's Going On by Marvin Gaye. I think that should be ranked higher. Number 16, Blue by Johnny Michelle. Or Mitchell, excuse me. Number 15, 21 by Adele. Number 14, Highway 61 Revisited by Bob Dylan. That's cool. 13, The Blueprint by Jay-Z. I love The Blueprint. That should have been ranked way further back. Get the fuck out of here. Love The Blueprint. Love Jay-Z. Don't love that positioning. Number 12, OK Computer by Radiohead. Number 11, Rumors by Fleetwood Mac. I'm cool with that. Number 10, Lemonade by Beyonce. I don't know if that's a top 10 all-time album, but it's definitely a classic. Number 9, Nevermind by Nirvana. You know, they get that. They, they, they did their shit. Cool. Should have been ranked a little further back, but, you know, whatever. All-time? Number eight, Back to Black by Amy Winehouse. Fire album. Fire album. Number eight all time. Number seven, Good Kid, Mad City by Kendrick Lamar. Seven? No, I'm sorry. Good Kid, Mad City. I loved Good, I loved good Kid, Mad City. I just played it again last night. And that's not a top 10 album of all time. I'm sorry. Uh, that should have been probably in the thirties, respectfully. Number six, songs in the key of life by Stevie wonder. I'm cool with that. Five blonde by Frank ocean. No, not top 10 album ever created. No, no. Frank ocean. Got to get the fuck out the gate. Kendrick Lamar. Got to get the fuck out the gate. Y'all, y'all could have lived in the forties, thirties, somewhere around there. No. Okay. Number four, Purple Rain by Prince and the Revolution. I respect that. I, do I respect number at, at number four? No. But I respect it out of respect. Number three, Abbey Road by the Beatles. No. <laughs> no. Okay. And the Beatles deserve to be up there. But no. Number two, Thriller by Michael Jackson. And number one, The Miseducation of Lauryn Hill by Lauryn Hill. Number one album of all time, Miseducation of Lauryn Hill over Thriller. I don't know about that. I don't know about that at all. 
As a matter of fact, how you going to have Thriller on this list and not have Off the Wall on this list? Are we really what? What's going on? What what is what's going on? <sighs> Miseducation of Lauren Hill. I would even I would even be cool with that somewhere in the top 20. Number one all time flawless victory. I don't know about that. So again, this list is causing a lot of uproar, a lot of conversation. A lot of people are fucking angry about this shit. Matter of fact, Jermaine Dupree came out and he said that the level of disrespect for R&B not really being acknowledged on this list is diabolical, right? Because you don't really see too many R&B artists on here. You got Solange. You got Usher. You got Mary. I wouldn't put Nina Simone in the R&B category, but you can, you know. Um, SZA. Um, Badu. Sade is, you know, somewhere in the R&B category. It's kind of alternative a little bit. D'Angelo, Rihanna. Stevie Wonder qualifies. Janet, that Control album wasn't necessarily R&B, though. That was like... That was like... I don't even know what you call that genre that they were making. That was like on the heels of like... Fucking... I guess. That was when they were still trying to put like... Crazy synthesizers and shit in the music. I don't even know what genre they call that shit. That's that... Jimmy Jam, Terry Lewis stuff. But I guess some people would call it uh, R&B. Before I start disrespecting everybody, <laughs> I'm going to just say I get where JD coming from. You know what I mean? What are, the, what are the people saying? Let's go to Twitter. Let's go to somewhere where people are having a conversation about this and get into the psyche of how people are respecting this, if at all. You know what I'm saying? Whoa. Mm, yeah. 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 The black, the black music people are angry. So this person here says just a short list of albums that Apple music somehow did not put on their top 100 albums of all time. They have to Pimp a Butterfly by Kendrick in Rainbows by Radiohead, Reasonable Doubt by Jay-Z. I think Reasonable Doubt is a better album than The Blueprint, but I know The Blueprint is a more popular album. Uh, what is that? Things Fall Apart by The Roots. I would definitely, eh, I don't know if that's a top 100 album of all time. Maybe a top 100 hip hop album, but come on. College Dropout by Kanye. I think that is definitely a contender. Um, what is that? Mob Deep, The Infamous? No. But in in the sphere of hip hop, yes. All time, no. Graduation by Kanye. I like graduation, but the latter half of graduation kind of puts me to sleep. Um, is that Mama's Gun by Erica Badu? I respect the fuck out of that. Mad Villain, MF Doom, and no, no. Love that album, by the way. No, not top 100 all time. Liquid Swords by Jizza. Love Liquid Swords. Fuck no. B by Common. One of his best, but no. And that's, and that's the thing, right? You start seeing what other people would insert into the list, and you see how how crazy that is how delusional we all are as music fans because everybody's gonna twist and turn it into their own preference hell i feel like some of the stuff i said sounds crazy 
So I'm not I'm not putting nobody over nobody. But what the fuck, man? <laughs> we need a redo. Redo. Let the people let the people vote on who who the constituents that's going to be voting on this thing are. Can we do that? This stuff is crazy, man. It seems like they tried to keep most artists out from having like multiple listings. Beyonce showed up more than once, but who who showed up more than once? Uh, Beyonce, maybe Stevie Wonder. And that's damn near it. that's what we got y'all let me know how y'all feel about this list let me know some of the albums and uh albums that y'all felt like should have made the list should have been ranked higher on the list should have been ranked lower i'm quite sure this is going to influence other publications and other platforms to come out and try to do their own version of this i would really like to uh not see anyone else attempt this because clearly there's too much music that's been released too much classic music to ever try to create a top 100 any fucking way which is why when i got to like the 70 somethings i was like i i, I just feel like this shouldn't have happened because it just lets you know you're never gonna get it right you're never gonna get it right it's too much music there's too many styles and genres of music there's too much iconic music too much influential music um, and if you were not around for some of those time periods and it wasn't like passed down to you by an elder or something like that, there's clearly going to be stuff that just has no bearing in your life that you're going to just completely disregard. Like I did for probably 60% of the list. So there we have that. Wanted to have a discussion about it. Let me know again, what y'all think of it. Um, again, if you want to get one of these inside the industry hats, just uh, just let me know. Uh, the best place to reach me is going to be at uh, Real J Nolan on Instagram or Twitter to where you could hit me and be like, yo, I want one because, again, I got to get this color readjusted um, before I let anybody get it. Unless y'all like the yellow, because then I could just do multiple. I could do the yellow. I could do the, the, uh, the orange. I could do, you know what I mean, multiple different versions of it. But. If y'all want one of these things, man, just let me know and uh, I will link you to it in the very near future. All right. Much love and respect to everybody. Thank y'all for tuning in. I'm going to catch y'all a bit later. We got some more content dropping today. So just stay locked in. I just wanted to talk about this because <sighs> that's all I got for y'all. All right. Much love and respect. I'll catch y'all in a minute. Peace. King of my city in Kodasak Coming, I swing like Soldier Rat Leading my people like quarterback Boy, I study this shit, I'm an almanac Had to get up and grind Knowledge is booming, I'm here to apply Came with the chip and the dip It just single the mind We finna do more to survive I need my check Spinning the block for the Gouda We hitting the jeweler to flood out the net We don't do beef on computers I'm straight out the sewer We come when you rest Niggas be looking perplexed So keeping my foot on their neck No map, I trust my gut for the quest With drama, I'm fully oppressed I was ready for years and they died of me All of a sudden, they tell me they proud of me I've been dropping these haters like calories Cross my I came back with some battle, we stand for my honor. But two run no gunner, packing a stick with a drum. Wanna catch my bad one fumble? I done came too far to be humble.